trying to turn back the clocks. 11th ranked Youngstown State welcomes back a 1991 national championship team as well as the 21st ranked Northern Iowa Panthers, a team that's won 12 of the last 13 in this matchup. Alongside Danon Hughes, I am Brad Wells. Tim Posguy will be joining us in just a little bit. But Danon, this Missouri Valley Football Conference matchup is a big one with playoff implications, especially for Northern Iowa. Absolutely, Brad. When you consider where these teams are and where they want to be, this is a crucial game. Both teams have phenomenal defenses. They're not going to give up a bunch of points. It's going to be a hard-fought game. The strengths of both defenses lie in the front seven. And for Youngstown State, Avery Moss and Derek Rivers, the big guys on the edge. They're doing an absolutely phenomenal job playing sideline to sideline. But more importantly, I'm trying to figure out what's in the water in this state of Ohio. The Buckeyes as well as the Penguins, two of the only college football programs that have not given up a rushing touchdown. They're looking to keep that streak going today. The two guys with the next best opportunity to score the first rushing touchdown of the year on the Penguins, quarterback Aaron Bailey and running back Tyvis Smith. An outstanding one-two punch for the Panthers. These two guys have done a phenomenal job carrying this offense. Now, obviously, the game is going to be won in the trenches with the offensive line, but those two guys need to have a big night in order for the Panthers to be successful. All right, it's Youngstown State's biggest home game of the season. We'll kick it off next here on Valley Football on ESPN3. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. You're looking to your future, preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root, and here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University, and proud. Insurance company wasn't only there when things went wrong. Because for every tornado, there's a twister. For every crash, an even bigger collision. And for every tailspin, well, tailspins. State Farm understands that getting the most out of life doesn't just mean being there when things go wrong. It's about being here in all of life's moments when things go perfectly right. sponsored by State Farm. There for you when things go wrong, but always here to help life go right. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Our opening kickoff brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental. You'll find a great rate on a great car rental at more than 300 conveniently located Thrifty Car Rental sites as Zach Kennedy gets set to kick it off for Youngstown State, a first team all Missouri Valley Football Conference place kicker a year ago. And he'll have the breeze behind him here on this opening kickoff. Back deep for Northern Iowa is Michael Malloy and Jalen Rima. Will be Rima taking a knee in the end zone as Northern Iowa's. Offense will set up at the 25-yard line. Send it down to Tim Pose guy on the sidelines. Taking a look at this Youngstown State defense. Tim? Hey, guys. There's been a lot of talk so far this year about this Penguin defense, and rightfully so. It's been a focal point for them, and one of the keys to that, according to Coach Pellini, is the speed that this team plays with. He feels this may be his fastest defense he's had at any level, and that includes at Nebraska. 
and compliments from head coach Bo Pelini. Anytime you have speed on the defense, that can be very difficult for an offense in Northern Iowa. A run heavy offense, but Bailey throwing on first down and missing Darius Fountain on the near sideline. Well, Brad, you hit the nail on the head. The Youngstown Penguins, Youngstown State Penguins, want to start this game off in their fashion. They want to establish the tempo, establish the momentum on defense. That's their best unit of the three units, and obviously they didn't. The uh, Panthers were not successful on that first play. Bailey sends a man in motion on the end around is Allen trying to get to the edge and there's the speed of that Youngstown State defense. Coming up with a stop on the far side. Well, Jameel Smith has been a leader on this defense throughout his career. And you can see, as you said, Brad, how you play sideline to sideline. What will benefit this Penguins defense is if they can continue to force the Panthers to go east and west and not get north south. So here is a third down and eight opportunity for Northern Iowa. And Bailey's looking to throw, has a man wide open in the flats, but it's dropped by Jalen James, the redshirt freshman out of Des Moines, Iowa. James, one of the guys that Dana, you wanted to keep your eye on throughout this game. Absolutely, and you can see the frustration on James's face. He recognized the mix-up and miscommunication on the defense. Could have turned that five-yard route into a big gain for the Panthers and a first down. Lost a little focus there, Brad, and now you have fourth down for the Panthers. Sometimes those easiest balls right there are the toughest to catch and toughest to keep your, your focus. Youngstown State lets it bounce. Darian Townsend, the deep man for the Penguins. So it'll be YSU on offense. Smart decision there by Townsend. Don't want to risk muffing that punt by trying to unnecessarily go after a rolling ball. That ball was not going to move into the red zone or get their, them backed up to the end zone. So uh, take the ball on the 30-yard line, let your offense do the work. Junior quarterback Ricky Davis there. He's got a similar tough task for him tonight. Carter Schultz, uh, All-American on the Northern Iowa defensive end front four. They keep it on the ground. We talk about Carter Schultz. He's done a phenomenal job all throughout his career. We have some upperclassmen, senior leaders, not just in stats, but on the field. And Carter Schultz is one of them. That last play was made by the coach's son, Farley, at that middle linebacker position. Very active linebacker in the middle of this solid defense for the Panthers. Yeah, Jared Farley leads the team in tackles so far this season with 36 for their first five games. Swing pass out to Webb is incomplete. Jody Webb, one of two running backs for Youngstown State. The other one, Martin Ruiz, yeah. one of our impact players to keep an eye on. Well, Bo Pelini has the luxury of having three very good running backs, and Jody Webb, they all complement each other extremely well. Jody Webb is more of a scat back guy. Those are the type of plays you draw up to try to get the ball into Jody's hands where he has some space to be able to use that speed and quickness for big yardage. So third down and 10 for YSU here on their opening offensive possession. Davis chased from behind and the pass is batted away. Guess who? Carter Schultz in the backfield causing havoc for Northern Iowa's defense. Great job of persistence, bearing down on Ricky Davis. Did not know where Schultz was, was able to get a big play, obviously made by that man, Jared Farley. But you can see the pressure coming from the backside of Davis. No way he could get enough mustard on that pass to complete it for the first down. And then Farley slaps it away. And a false start on the offense. Looks like it'll back up. Youngstown State, five yards here. It's fourth and 10, will become fourth and 15. As we talked about, Brad, these teams rely heavily on their defense to make plays, but the one thing that you have to look at also are 
who's going to make the least amount of mistakes? Who's going to have those penalties that stop drives or get them backed up into, uh, you know, field position situations? Logan Cunningham back to return the punt, catches it at the 30-yard line and knocked backward for Northern Iowa. We'll start with slightly better field position as we'll be back after this. You're watching the State Farm Missouri Valley Football Game of the Week. Back after this. Tell you back. Is this my car? State Farm knows that for every one of what? those moments, this is ridiculous. There's one of these. Is this my car? What? This is ridiculous. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Shut up. Shut up. Ah! <laughs> That's why State Farm is there. What a day. With car insurance for when things go wrong. What a day. But also here with car loans <laughs> to help life go right. State Farm. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. Nobody comes into this house no without paying the price. Not here, not ever! State Farm knows that for every one of those moments, there's one of these. Nobody comes into this house without paying the price. Not here, not ever. Well, did you get it? More people save money by combining their home and auto with State Farm. Here to help life go right. State Farm. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. Today's Impact Players are brought to you by On The Run, the official convenience store of the Missouri Valley Football Conference. For Youngstown State, Derek Rivers on the end and the young Jalen James at wide receiver for Northern Iowa. Well, we talked about how tough it's going to be to establish the run for the Panthers, so they're going to have to go to the air. They had the one drop by Jalen James, but he needs to have a big day. And you can see the athleticism right here by Aaron Bailey. This is what devastates opposing defenses, is when you have him bottled up in the pocket, but yet he's so elusive, so strong, so fast, he can make something out of nothing, a big play for the Panthers. And that's a gain of 11, the first first down of this football game, as Northern Iowa with the football for the second time here in this first quarter. Tyvis Smith in the backfield next to Bailey. And some movement on the bottom of your screen there. Kenny Bishop tried to quick jam at the wide receiver at the line of scrimmage, guessing on the snap count and guessed wrong there. Now we'll create first and five. That are That is two situations where Youngstown State has kind of shot themselves in the foot. And the Panthers are ready to pounce. Bailey looking with pretty good field position here after that first down run for 11 yards. He's going to hand it off to Tyvis Smith and able to dive forward close to that first down marker. He needed to get to the 50 yard line. Mark just short. It'll be second down. Tyvis Smith is a great running back. Obviously, he's done a nice job this year. 425 yards rushing and two touchdowns on the season. One through the air as well. So. One of those guys that has a dual threat in the backfield. We'll also see another guy in Michael Malloy, who's that hybrid as well. Bailey hands it off once again. Smith straight forward, trying to get that tough yard right in the middle. And we talked about the strength of the front seven. Youngstown State bottling it up inside that time. Yes, Avery Moss, Savon Smith, Cody Squirrick, Derek Rivers, that front four. You add in a linebacking core, very athletic, and Jalen Kelly and Jamar Pinnock, and 
those guys make plays. Defensively, now you have a third and short here. The Panthers really trying to do a solid job of establishing the run. Crucial down here. And Michael Malloy in at running back. In motion goes Christian Jagan, a true freshman. It looked like early movement up front. Third and short may become third and a little tougher here. And this is where it gets tricky. When you're on offense and you're trying to deceive the defense and get free yardage, trying to draw them off sides, that can work against you. And you never want to put too much onus on your offense to hold their water in that type of pressure situation with third and short. Now they're back to third and medium here and need a big play. I anticipate they'll be looking for the receivers in the passing game here. And there you saw Ryan Mahaffey on the sideline, co-offensive coordinator for Northern Iowa this year, a former UNI tight end, back to his alma mater. As Bailey looking to throw through the hands and incomplete. Intended receiver was Trevor Allen, just could not come up with the catch. Ball thrown on his back shoulder, but Trevor got two hands on it. We've seen two passes now from Aaron Bailey that should have been caught by the receivers. A tough catch nonetheless, but one that should be made. And there's a lot of real estate out there. If he makes that catch, he's going to go for a lot more yardage. Well, Dana, as tough as these football teams are on defense, the receivers got to start coming up with some plays downfield when they're there. There's Logan. Excuse me, Sam Cooter to punt it away and fair catch called for and made by Townsend. Youngstown State set up shot back the 25 yard line. Well, we were down on the field during pregame warmups recognizing how the wind is going to play a part in this game as it's coming from the south at the backs of the Penguins. They can take this opportunity to throw the ball downfield and try to get some yardage in chunks. Now the tricky thing is, is that oftentimes it is actually tougher to throw with the wind than against the wind. So you have to gauge it just a little bit. Don't want to overthrow open receivers. Davis holds on to it here to throw it on first down. Gets his man. It's Kevin Rader. And then popped by Elijah Campbell on the near side. Just a good throw and catch there, trying to get things going for this offense. We're watching both the Penguins and the Panthers employ no huddle offense. Taking a little bit more time at the line of scrimmage are the Penguins, but they'll take those little five yard dump passes and continue to drive. And here's the handoff to Webb on the left side. Some positive yards for Youngstown Stink before Northern Iowa closes in on the coverage of Sean Dexter with the tackle. That's the elusiveness of Jody Webb. Part of that one, two, three punch. Keep an eye out for Tevin McCaster as well. He's the third running back, but really has done a nice job as of late. Had 81 yards rushing last week. And Martin Ruiz. One of the all time greats, all purpose yardage running backs to come through these doors. It's a straight dive straight up the middle as Martin Ruiz looking for a Youngstown State first down. And he does have enough to move the change for the Penguins. The first success we've seen thus far in this game by either offense right there, getting that first down. With this crucial situation to me that this is where you have to establish drives Brad and really show that you're trying to play your game can be a little bit of a chess match back and forth because both de both defenses play so well. Let's see who's going to show their crack first so far both defenses playing very tough Davis looking for a big pass here on first down and overshoots his man. Looking for Isaiah Scott on the far sideline, just out of his reach. And this is exactly what I was talking about, using the wind and trying to gauge your throw down the sideline. If it's a normal, less than five mile an hour wind, that's a perfectly thrown ball in only an area where his receiver can catch it. Have to be able to figure out how to dial back that velocity when you're throwing downfield with such a strong wind behind you. Davis runs the option 
And tackled in the backfield is Webb, and that's Deshaun Dexter once again coming up with a big play for Northern Iowa defensively. Well, watch number seven, Ricky Neal, immediately take Ricky Davis out of the play, forcing him to pitch off to Jody Webb, and in the right place at the right time, Deshaun Dexter, an undersized linebacker, listed at 5'9", 205, a senior that has really had a solid career here but knows how to make those type of plays. So third down and forever now for Youngstown State after capturing their first first down of this football game. They're now backing up. Looks like man-to-man -man coverage, maybe coming with a blitz. They back out and decoy. And Davis finds some pressure, and he goes down. Carter Schultz once again with a quarterback sack. Outstanding pressure by the senior defensive end, Carter Schultz. They just do not have a remedy for stopping number 93. Watch him on the right side. Just a twist stunt between he and the defensive tackle. A TE stunt, tight, a, a, a tackle and stunt. And... The offensive line loses track of Schultz, which I don't know how that's possible. You should know exactly where number 93 is, but a big play for the Panthers. He ranks number one in all of FCS with seven and a half sacks coming in. He's got eight and a half now as Logan Cunningham loses yards once again on that punt return. We'll be back with Northern Iowa's offense right after this. You're watching the State Farm Missouri Valley Football Conference Game of the Week. The defense is clamping down in Youngstown, Ohio. 16 total yards after four offensive drives. Just one more yard than total penalty <laughs> yards so far here in this first quarter, Danon. Well, there's a reason why we talk so highly about the defenses. Now, it hasn't been a pretty game thus far, but you have to believe with these offenses, someone's about to break. And Aaron Bailey looking downfield for Rima, and it's caught by the true freshman Jalen Rima out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Excellent job. And how about how nimble Aaron Bailey is? Watch him rolling to his left, squares his shoulders, and gets just enough mustard on that pass to complete it. And nice footwork on the sideline. Misdirection in the backfield, a very athletic quarterback, but showed some passing skills. A lot of people around the Panther program believe he's really elevated his game in the passing realm and becoming more of a complete quarterback. Here's Bailey in trouble, and he goes down. It's a big-time loss, and Youngstown State comes up with a big stop by Savon Smith. Pressure up the middle. You may be able to get away with pressure around the edge if you have athleticism like Aaron Bailey, but if he gets that pressure right up in his face. And you can see Savon Smith, the defensive tackle, right up in the middle, good speed to the edge. We talked about Avery Moss earlier. Can't get around the edge on this defense very often. Big play for the pan for, for the Penguins. So right after a 30-yard pass play in the positive, minus 12 on that quarterback sack. Bailey looking to throw here on second and long. Into the flats, Michael Malloy across mid midfield and almost back to the. Well, gets about half of it back. Gain of six or seven. And that's, and, and that's exactly what that play was designed to do to try to get a large chunk back. Obviously, they'd like to get more and maybe be within third and ten. But this is a very tough situation here for the Panthers. And Michael Malloy is a guy that's listed as a hybrid guy. Kind of reminds me of. One of the great running backs that came through this program just a few years ago, David Johnson, wearing that same number 31, can make plays out of the backfield and as a runner. David Johnson wearing 31 for the Arizona Cardinals this year. Here's Bailey trying to get out of trouble. Sees nothing but red jerseys. Maybe gets back to the initial line of scrimmage, pushing him out of bounds. Donald Maceer. And it'll be a punting situation for you and I. How about the discipline by this defense? Not going for the home run big hit on Aaron Bailey, but just trying to contain him in the pocket. That's a big win for this Penguins defense. If they can contain him, force him to scramble like that, not be able to throw the ball downfield, and then getting to these fourth and extra long yardage situations, that's a win for the defense. Darian Townsend. 
Back deep for Youngstown State. As Cooter shoots it towards the corner, and it will be inside the 20-yard line for Youngstown State. Back with more after this on the State Farm, Missouri Valley Football Game of the Week. On the run has everything you need in one convenient stop. Fountain and frozen drinks, gourmet coffee, a variety of freshly made sandwiches, salads and snacks, and automatic car washes. It's our impact players. Youngstown State on the roll with Martin Ruiz, our impact player on the YSU offense. Well, perfect timing to showcase the big playmaking running back for the Penguins. Martin Ruiz, the senior running back, has over 3,500 yards of offense throughout his career and 35 touchdowns. Almost has a big one here. Nice hustle by the defense for the Panthers. And we've already seen the exploits of Carter Schultz. When you break the huddle, note to the Penguins, find number 93 and figure out a way to block them or it's going to be a long day for this offense. Straight ahead with Webb out to midfield. Temple made by Campbell for Northern Iowa. Big play for the Penguins. They want to establish the run game. They do not want this game to be totally in the hands of Ricky Davis. They believe he's able. He's capable of leading this offense. If he has to throw it to win it, he can. But they'd love to lean on that one, two, three punch in the backfield. It's Bailey in motion for Youngstown State. The handoff goes straight ahead to Webb. And look at that tackle by Elijah Campbell for Northern Iowa. Seeing playmaking defensive backs, secondary players making plays in the backfield. St. Paul, Minnesota native transferred from Northern Illinois. See the push up front, Hezekiah Applegate, part of that push. Pocket collapse, so the hole was non-existent. Forced Webb to bounce outside, and that's where the speed of the defensive backfield comes into play for the Panthers. Davis looking to throw. Now gets flushed out of the pocket and taken down in the backfield. Hezekiah Applegate getting some pressure in the middle once again. Primary receivers not getting open, forcing Ricky Davis to double clutch and try to use his athleticism. And lane discipline has been phenomenal for the Panthers. And their pass rush, they're not allowing him to squirt through any holes to get positive yardage. So impressed with both defenses so far, Brad. They really have been on top of their game here in this first quarter. As Schuler punts it away, does get a pretty good bump from Campbell, but no flag comes out as the fair catch is made inside the 10 by Cunningham, where Northern Iowa will set up shop. Well, this is one of those things where it works against you to have a six foot five, 250 pound punter because little defensive backs or wide receivers that come up on you, they can bounce off you. And you saw Elijah Campbell. Six foot, 195, go after that punt, and they were very fortunate not to have a roughing the punter penalty there and give another set of downs to the Penguins. Schuler was a tight end before this summer when he converted to <laughs> punting and focusing exclusively on punting. And Looked like he just kind of brushed off a fly there. That goes know. down as a broken tackle, doesn't it? A little mosquito bite or something. Here's Bailey. With Tyvis Smith to his right, hands it off to the senior running back out of Davenport, Iowa. Powers his way across the 10, close to the 11-yard line. It's the tackle made by Armand Delavade. Armand Delavade playing that middle linebacker position for the Penguins. A nice job by Jamar Pinnock, that outside linebacker, taking on the lead blocker. Just love watching this, these type of defenses play where guys are not trying to do be wild cards out there. They are totally disciplined. Once again, a handoff to Smith, trying to get the edge. He does. It's out across the 18-yard line where you and I will move the chains and a very important first down being backed up. Kenny Bishop coming up with that cut block tackle as he's, you saw Tyvis Smith there had a little, a few words for him and trying to coax him into coming up high and hitting high. He's smart. He's a defensive back. He's small. <laughs> Go around those ankles 
and chop block tackle and live for the next down. Yeah, Tyvis Smith at 6'3", 225 pounds. He'd love to run over a defensive back on every single play. There he gets the handoff and gets a heavy dose of defensive linemen. That's Maceer once again on the tackle. Donald Maceer, a transfer from Mesa Community College, redshirted a year ago. Second year on Youngstown State's campus. First year seeing some playing time. Here's a look at senior quarterback Aaron Bailey, the transfer from Illinois, trying to lead this Northern Iowa offense here tonight. Hand off to Smith, right side. Tyvis Smith turns it upfield once he gets to that opposite hash. Tackle made by Smith on the far side. Active tackle leader for the Penguins, Jameel Smith has really done a fine job coming up from that strong safety position. But the concentrated effort in this drive to establish the run game for the Panthers, trying to win at the point of attack, trying to get those offensive linemen going to the second level as the first quarter comes to an end. A little bit of a tug of war here. Absolutely. Defense is proving to be just as strong as we build. Back after this as you're watching the State Farm Missouri Valley Football Game of the Week. Ball up 27. Welcome to your Missouri Valley football extra point for the week of October 15th. I'm Kelly Burke and from five unbeatens in conference to now just three with two of them squaring off this coming weekend. The 75 pound Dakota marker trophy will be up for grabs this Saturday in Fargo. The rivalry between North Dakota State and South Dakota State has been one sided as of late with the Bison having won the last six in the series including last year's 28 seven win in Brookings. The Dakota Marker game dates back to 2004, coinciding with both schools' moves up to Division I. But the series between the Jackrabbits and Bison goes all the way back to 1903. Now this season, both teams come into the game 2-0 in the Valley. While NDSU leads the Dakota Marker series 8-4, five of the 12 games have been decided by seven points or less. Now speaking of the Bison, they are now one of just five undefeated teams in the FCS and 16 teams still perfect in all of Division I. Their 14-game win streak is the second best all-time in league history. At 5-0, North Dakota State has the longest active win streak in the FCS, with Chattanooga a distant second. The other conference unbeaten Youngstown State continues to stifle opponents with their run defense. The Penguins are the only FCS team who have yet to yield a rushing touchdown this season. In the past 20 years, only the 2009 Northern Iowa Panthers finished the season by giving up less than five rushing touchdowns as they finished with four. Right now, the Penguins, Panthers, and NDSU are among the 2016 NCAA leaders in rushing touchdowns allowed. And a reminder, all of today's games can be seen and replayed right here on ESPN3. For now, we'll take you back to first half action between Northern Iowa and Youngstown State. A real nice crowd on hand in Youngstown, Ohio, as 11th ranked Youngstown State is hosting 21st ranked Northern Iowa. Youngstown State celebrating a silver anniversary. You'll see the silver and the Y on their helmets. Northern Iowa trying to spoil a homecoming for a national championship team. We'll have more on coming up. Aaron Bailey facing a third and one. Hands it off. Michael Malloy straight ahead, and it's a Northern Iowa first down as the Panthers now two first downs after being backed up inside the 10-yard line. Excellent push up front. Robert Rathge, the senior center, one of the leaders of this offensive line, really doing a nice job. Any play that gets that positive yardage right up the gut, it's because, because of Rathge. He does a fine job and obviously has his guys Trevor Hansen and Jackson Scott Brown in there with him. Michael Malloy behind Bailey. As Coach Farley talked about him this week, says really gives Northern Iowa a lot of options as Bailey keeps it that time, able to dive forward for a gain of one. Seeing a lot of activity at the line of scrimmage, Brad, from the defensive backfield for both teams. That play was made by Leroy Alexander. 
been an outstanding free safety for this Penguins program. Not much respect for downfield receivers playing man to man. Those defensive backs really active in the run game. Second down and long. Bailey looking to throw, looking over the middle. Can't pull the trigger. Now dances around and maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage before the pocket collapses. Avery Moss and once again, Savon Smith. Well, Aaron Bailey seemed to get fixated on the crossing route. A good job of passing that route off. Good communication in the back end by the Penguins. Now another third and long situation for the Panthers. Amazing defense being played so far. We've got a timeout taken by Northern Iowa's head coach Mark Farley wants to talk it over. Coach Farley in his 16th season. Be back with more as you're watching the State Farm Missouri Valley Football Game of the Week. Northern Iowa out of a timeout on third down and nine. Danon, what's the call? I think what you want to see is a little bit of a mesh route. And what I mean by that, Brad, is maybe a pick between the three wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. Try to get some miscommunication, maybe missed assignment. Bailey avoids the pressure, looking downfield. In the vicinity was Christian Jagan. He would have been out of bounds if he held on to it. So it'll be a punting situation for Northern Iowa. The persistent pressure continues to rattle Aaron Bailey. Now he has the athleticism to make many defenders miss as you see him getting some communication on the sideline, trying to make sure he and his wide receivers are on the same page. But the frustration is real in this game for the senior quarterback. So here's Cooter to punt it away. It's the turf bounces right to Townsend from the 22 yard line to the edge. Nice open field tackle made by Northern Iowa. Youngstown State inside the 35 yard line. DJ Singleton on the tackle for UNI. It's a 6 3 senior out of Union, New Jersey, transferred from the University of Nebraska. Union, New Jersey. Fellow right New neck Jersey. Of the win. Yeah. Woods, yes. A lot of very good football players came out of Union, New Jersey. They were a big powerhouse in Jersey for many years. I know I like that Singleton kid for a reason. <laughs> Coming up with a special teams tackle there for Northern Iowa. It's Davis up underneath center. This could be a free play for the Penguins. Davis goes downfield and undershoots his man. Intended receiver there. You see Damon Patterson. Brad, both quarterbacks are getting moved off of their spot quite often in this game. As we saw, that was going to be a free play for the Penguins. Offsides at the top of the screen. It's Ricky Neal, the sophomore out of Racine, Wisconsin. A little trigger happy trying to get around that edge. But again, the Penguins could not capitalize on that free opportunity because of the persistent pass rush of the Panthers. Davis gets the call from the sideline. Here is Ruiz up the right side and a nice hole for Youngstown State. And Ruiz with a YSU first down as they move the chains, knocking on the door of Panther territory. Excellent push up front. You're seeing some violence at the point of attack by the offensive line for the Penguins. Brock Eisenhuth, Dylan Colucci, two seniors on that right side have been around this program a long time. They have that nastiness that's needed to get that type of chunk yardage. Vita Sarankowitz, a nice center that they're very high on here at Youngstown State. Davis, back to pass. Avoids the pressure. Now he's got some space to run. He gets tackled from behind by Jared Farley as he does get into UNI territory. 
Two quarterbacks very elusive in the pocket. Not able to stay with the timing of these type of plays because of the pass rush. Right there again, Ricky Neal in the face of Ricky Davis. And Jared Farley, linebacker, hard-nosed, blue-collar, coach's kid, seems to be all over this field. And Dane, and this will be just the third play for both offenses across midfield. How about that? The defense backs him up <laughs> back into Penguin territory. It's Bailey on the reception. Alvin Bailey, transfer from Florida. Yeah, they're really high on this young man. Believe he has the speed to make some big plays for this offense. And obviously the design of those bubble screens is to get the ball as quickly as possible into the playmaking hands of a guy like Bailey. But the rallying defense just doesn't allow him to skirt free. So it's third down. Davis looking for a middle screen for Ruiz, and you and I was all over it. The ball came out. Northern Iowa may have fallen on it as Davis coughed it up, and it is Northern Iowa football. Ricky Davis took a big hit from behind, punched the ball out, may have fell on the ball, looked like maybe lost his breath just a bit as he still lays down on the field. A big play for the defense of the Panthers. Trent Hosick, the backup quarterback for Youngstown State. As you take another look, Ricky Davis trying to escape pressure. It was Elijah Campbell that came up with the football. Carter Schultz. And then right there, the big hit by Ricky Neal from behind. A rallying defense. Gets his head right between the one and two. And you can see the arm punch out right there. Right arm punch out the ball. Perfect tackle, form tackle. Trying to dislodge the ball from the ball carrier. And that's a big turnover for the Panthers. Great work by our camera crew as well. We've got our first turnover of the football game as Ricky Davis being helped to his feet. He's limping. I thought maybe he just lost, got the wind knocked out of him. and Could be that, but looks like he's limping just a bit on that right leg. We'll take one more look at this yeah. hit on Ricky Davis. As he may have got it from multiple different directions here, Danon. Yeah, we talked about Ricky Neal, but watch his knee right there go into the ground, into the turf. Right at his oh, knee. Oh, right there. Oh, that's a big hit There's by a helmet Jared right Farley. on the left knee. Yeah. Right on his knee. Who flushed him out of the pocket initially? Number 93, Carter Schultz. Defensive ends. The talk of the town coming into this game, and they have put everything on display here in this first half. Here's Aaron Bailey, a little keeper straight ahead, and a nice gain on first down. For you and I, senior quarterback Aaron Bailey on the Stat Offensive Player of the Year watch list. First team preseason all MV FC pick, second team at the end of last season. Very dangerous out in open space when he's got the football in his hands. <laughs> Absolutely. Just a big time playmaker, not your prototypical quarterback, although he's gotten better throwing the ball in his senior season. But he knows how to make plays with his legs. Bailey keeps it himself, fakes it to Tyvis Smith, gets around the edge, gets out in some space, and keeps his feet. He's inside the 25-yard line. As Aaron Bailey trying to get this Northern Iowa offense rolling, and here on two straight run plays, he's doing just that. Absolutely. At 6'2", 222 pounds, can't question his toughness, but don't necessarily recognize how fast he is. He actually just stutter stepped at the line of scrimmage and outran and turned the corner on Avery Moss, the very talented defensive end for the Penguins. So knocking on the door of the red zone, hands it off to Tyvis Smith inside the 15 yard line. A big strong run straight ahead. In Northern Iowa all of a sudden looking really good running the football here. Indeed, running it right up the gut. 
The point of attack, Rathji, Hansen, Appleman, Scott Brown, and Twait. That offensive line for the Panthers winning so far in this game. So first down, just outside of the 10 yard line for Northern Iowa. They're on the move. Handed off to Michael Malloy, left side. Met right at the 10 yard line and driven backwards. And on the tackle, Avery Moss, I think the first man there for Youngstown State. Well, you can tell what the game plan is for the Panthers in this game. They want to keep the ball on their side, keep it away from the offense of the Penguins, and, and win at the line of scrimmage with the run game. We talked about how solid, well, actually perfect, this defense is against the run, especially against touchdowns in the run with not giving up one on the season. But they're in jeopardy right now, that streak being broken. It's Michael Malloy down to the five-yard line for Northern Iowa. It's been Michael Malloy, Tyvis Smith, and Aaron Bailey all doing it for Northern Iowa on the ground as he checks out. Tyvis Smith back in. The second, excuse me, a third down and three. There's room to get a first down without getting a touchdown here. Now Malloy back out on the field. You have Malloy on the field. You have Tyvis Smith on the field. And at the top of the screen, the six foot three wide receiver, Jalen James, as well. Movement on Northern Iowa. Like Darius Fountain flinched. Darius Fountain's quite a story as well. A junior wide receiver at 6 3, also a pretty big target. He had three touchdown catches two weeks ago when Northern Iowa hosted Southern Illinois. As a former wide receiver, there's no worse feeling than that feeling right there. Everybody sees that it was you. You try to go into robot mode and freeze, but you just can't stop your momentum. Tough break for the junior wide receiver. I feel your pain, number 10. <laughs> Happens to the best of them, that's for sure. Now Fountain goes in motion. Here's Bailey looking to throw. Looks over the middle, and it's incomplete. Trevor Allen almost came up with it as he had it on his fingertips in the back of the end zone. Very tough throw. Almost perfect throw by Aaron Bailey here in a place where only his receiver could make the play. But you saw Delavade, Alexander, good job passing off the receiver to each other. Good communication, forcing the fourth down. Bend but not broken was that Penguins defense. Austin Ertham on for the field goal try of 28 yards and it is good so northern iowa able to put the first points up on the scoreboard coming here in the second quarter three nothing you're watching the state farm missouri valley football game of the week brad wells dan and hughes and tim pose guy from youngstown ohio as 11th ranked Youngstown State hosting 21st ranked Northern Iowa. And it's the Panthers take the early lead and strike first. Three nothing and an impressive drive for Northern Iowa. Very impressive indeed. Capitalizing on the mistake and mishap by the Penguins. Turnover at midfield. Able to march down and get three points on the board. Having a tough time trying to decide, Brad, who's winning this game. Not necessarily just on the score, but obviously as the visiting team, you want to get points on the board, and you know you're going against a very tough defense, but not a whole bunch to be sad about right now either if you're Bo Pelini for these Penguins. They are not playing their best football and only down by three points. On the defense is very strong. Northern Iowa after that big scoring drive. Now over 100 yards of total offense. Youngstown State just 34 yards of total offense. And now here in this second quarter, they'll be going into the win. Very, very tough situation. And we spoke so highly about the Penguins defense because they hadn't given up a rushing touchdown. The Panthers say, hey, what about us? We only gave up two rushing touchdowns on the season so far. So two very good defenses 
at display here today. Yeah, and before last week's game, too, Northern Iowa part of that uh, uh, group of teams that had not allowed a rushing touchdown. Youngstown State, though, they've got the football back. Just a bad pass to Alvin Bailey. Bad pass indeed, but what you're seeing from Ricky Davis in the pocket is he seems to be hampered with that right leg. He came up limping after he tried to fling it without using his lower part of his body on that throw, went right down into the turf, but he is not the same. You can see the grimace on his face and limping around as he tries to get the offense organized. Definitely have to keep an eye on that. He's an athletic mobile quarterback. There's a pitch out to Ruiz as Davis takes another shot in the backfield. And again, slow to get up as that right ankle is certainly ginger, Dane. And you talked about it. Yes. Now, now if you're Bo Pelini and the offensive staff for the Penguins, have to do a maybe change things up. Shane Montgomery, the offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach for the Penguins, got to take that into consideration how much you're going to move Ricky Davis around. How effective will that option be if he really can't tuck the ball and run? Trent Hosick, the backup quarterback, sending the signals in to Ricky Davis from the sideline. Does not have his helmet near him as Davis throws it over the middle and that's intercepted. Duncan Furch looking for the end zone and Northern Iowa's defense comes up with a pick six right after a field goal that opened the scoring. Well, when you are hampered with an injury, there are times where you're, the discipline can go out the window because your focus is elsewhere. And right here, Ricky Davis eyes his receiver. Watch the linebacker just read the eyes of Ricky Davis there. Easy throw and catch and the speed down the sideline. Another big play after a turnover by the Panthers. His second interception of the season. I can't imagine that Bo Pelini, offense coordinator, Shane Montgomery aren't going to rethink inserting Davis into the lineup. Bertham's extra point is good. And if your offense can't score points, let's let the defense score some points. Northern Iowa able to strike with a pick six. Duncan Furch back with more on the State Farm Missouri Valley Game of the Week. There you see junior quarterback Trent Hosick, a transfer from Arizona Western, putting his helmet on. The backup quarterback getting ready after Ricky Davis got banged up and now through an interception, Northern Iowa. Converted into a pick six. Duncan Furch gets the points for Northern Iowa's defense. 10-0, you and I. It's all been about the defense. Yes, the offense established a solid drive after the first turnover for the Penguins to get that field goal. But now you are reeling a little bit if you're a Penguin fan because your quarterback went down. Not sure how durable he will be or how available he will be for the rest of the game. But now the junior Trent Hosick who's gotten one start this season, is going to get into this game. Just two touchdowns and two interceptions on the season. 12 of 20 overall in the passing game for Hosick. And on first down, he hands it off to Ruiz straight ahead and gang tackled, able to gain three or four yards out to the 29. You're also noticing that the Panthers are loading the box, getting eight guys in the box, Really comfortable playing man-to-man -man defense on the outside. Not, they don't seem phased by the receiving core of the Penguins. Once again, Ruiz straight ahead. Tripped up by Farley at the 31. So back-to-back -back runs by Martin Ruiz, the senior out of Tampa, Florida. And it's a third and short for Youngstown State. Again, really struggling to get things going consistently in this game. Gavin Wiggins, offensive lineman, very active downfield blocking, actually comes out of the game right there on this third down situation. Jacob Zinni is in for him. 
That's Webb in motion. They fake the handoff to him. Hosick's going to keep it, and Hosick has the edge to the 50, the 40. Pushed down out of bounds inside the 40-yard line by Campbell. But Hosick comes in and does it with his feet. Catches the defense off guard there, and I think they underestimated the speed of Trent Hosick. Just your jet sweep, freezes the defense, great blocking at the point of attack, and then the speedy backup quarterback gets down the sideline. Takes a tough little push at the end of that by Elijah Campbell, but a big play for the Penguins. In the Northern Iowa Territory. YSU offense spread out. See if they try and shoot one deep here. Hosick back to pass. Looks over the middle, and it's intercepted. Malcolm Washington comes up with Northern Iowa's second INT as flags come in. Washington with a pick six earlier this season, a big interception for Northern Iowa. Another big play, turnover for the Penguins, big play for the Panthers, but more importantly, Trent Hosick went down holding his right shoulder after throwing that pass. Looked like it was hurt when he ran down the sideline on the big gain on the prior play. As he He's holding see. it gingerly right there. I think that initially happened when he ran down the sideline and got pushed down by Elijah Campbell. Tried to throw the ball and immediately as soon as it left his hand, he just grabbed it and clutched it and dropped to his knee. So not sure if that's a collarbone or a shoulder injury. You see that on the side. Return. Illegal block in the back. Number 30 of the intercepting team. Half the distance to the goal. First down, Northern Iowa. So penalty, a block in the back on the return. So the interception does stand for Malcolm Washington. As there you see Hosick getting some attention. Yep, you can see. It's right after there. the run play right there. After the run, he's trying to stretch it out. Feels a little discomfort. High five might have hurt yeah, Watch right this there throw too. right there. As soon as he lets it go, he takes a big hit and drops to his knee. And then from there on, you saw him holding that right arm. Obviously in discomfort, a lot of pain there. So now the question is, do you go back to Ricky Davis? Is he well enough to get back in this game at the quarterback position? Or do you drop down the depth chart? Questions to be answered on the Youngstown State offense. Washington, by the way, third straight game now with an interception for Northern Iowa's defense as Bailey in the offense is backed up. And a handoff to Tyvis Smith straight ahead. Not much as he gets out to the seven yard line for a short game. This is a situation where you want to be smart if you are the UNI Panthers. No need to allow any momentum to be taken away from what you're able to accomplish so far in this game three turnovers for the panthers defense no need to take any unnecessary chances here trying to get a big play and turn the ball over to this great defense another handoff time to smith nice hole up the middle across the 15 outside the 20 yard line and Tyvis Smith continue to find a little room running right between the tackles. Excellent job up front, the offensive line. I can't say it enough. Jackson, Scott Brown, Trevor Hansen, those two right guards. The wealth of the success in this offense so far in this game has come between the tackles. It's about attitude, and right now the Panthers have all of it. Jacob Appleman, Cal Twait, the other offensive lineman. For Northern Iowa as they keep it right between the tackles. Tyvis Smith, nice job keeping his feet right there. And another Northern Iowa first down. Breaks a couple of tackles. And it seems like right now the Penguins are getting a little tired of tackling big number 32. 6'1, 226 pounds. A quarterback, 6'2, 222 pounds. Big guys carrying the load for the Panthers right now. Seem to be wearing down the Penguins. 66 rushing yards now for Tyvis Smith. He gets a breather as Michael Malloy is in the backfield next to Bailey. Looking to throw. Darius Fountain caught at the 42 yard line, trying to keep his feet able to slide up to the 44. They'll mark him at the 43 yard line, but a good game on first down. It's a nice throw and catch, safe throw, seeing soft coverage. 
in the back end by the Penguins. Just run a little hitch route to your leading receiver. Get a large chunk of that creates second and short. Good smart plays by the Panthers. Three minutes to go here in this first half. Northern Iowa a 10 nothing lead and some momentum. Bailey sends Allen in motion, hands it off to Smith straight ahead. And that stop will make it third down. As Delavade with a nice tackle in the backfield out of his linebacker spot, as well as Jamar Pinnock. Third linebacker that rotates in. Senior, 6'3", out of Phoenix, Arizona. Well, the fans here are trying to get, get a reason going to get riled up this is a situation with the clock inside two minutes and 20 seconds left in this first half where the tide could change pretty quickly if they're able to make this stop maybe get another opportunity offensively or even better a, a turnover for the penguins bailey keeps it himself lost the football ysu has it and they get the football right back brad just call me nostradamus i called that this is perfect. It's like it's like I've been in this moment before, Brad. <laughs> this is our first time working together. You did not know that was the scouting report for me. But what about the big hit here? A quarterback keep and a big hit by Pinnock. Outside linebacker comes up. Helmet right on the ball. Not secured enough by Aaron Bailey. Right place, right time. Jameel Smith. Huge turnover for the Penguins. See, now you, so le just you learn something new about me. You know. <laughs> Take some notes. I, I've got it. I've got it. Lean on you whenever I need to know what's coming up here. <laughs> I'll tell you the Powerball numbers later. <laughs> <laughs> well, right when Northern Iowa seemed to have a ton of momentum, that was a huge turnover there going into halftime. Absolutely. And we talked about the quarterback situation, and Nathan Mays, third-string quarterback, is now in the game for the Penguins, just a redshirt freshman. Going to try to infuse some more energy and playmaking ability and get them on the scoreboard with just over 90 seconds left in this half. So we're seeing Youngstown State's third quarterback, and we're not even to halftime yet here in Youngstown, Ohio, as Mays looking to throw and able to complete a pass into Panther territory. Darian Townsend, the junior, on the reception. Youngstown State does have three timeouts left. This is a very tricky situation as well as you have the third string quarterback, a redshirt freshman in there. You want him to be able to lead this offense, but at the same time, you have to be aware of the clock and when you want to use those timeouts. I'm sure, if, they're, if they get a first down here, they may use that timeout. Start thinking about how to attack the end zone. Redshirt freshman out of Urbana, Ohio. Looking deep, now flushed out of the pocket. Chase down and gets back to the line of scrimmage. As Ricky Neal applying that final pressure. The clock still running here. Three timeouts for Youngstown. It's a fourth down here for the Penguins offense. I guess in this situation, you're a fourth down. More than likely going to punt it. Don't want to give a lot of time looking to at the, you and I. Looking at the play clock, I don't think they would have to snap it if they just want to go to the locker room down 10. Surprised that you and I didn't opt to call time out there to maybe get a big opportunity on a punt return. So they're going to call a timeout with two seconds left here. So we'll, we'll hang tight. Two seconds. As they say, Youngstown State has used the timeout. So looking for one final play here before the halftime horn. And there, there you have it, opting not to punt the ball, but recognizing going for a Hail Mary as the UNI Panthers go into their prevent defense. Take one big heave ho to the end zone. Now also a big factor here, Brad, they're going into the win. That's the right. Third string quarterback, fresh into the game, now has the task of launching that ball probably about 55 yards or so into the end zone after he takes his drop or, or gets the uh, snap in the shotgun. 
and uh, try to get a strong enough throw, but more importantly, get good protection. Carter Schultz is out there licking his chops <laughs> with this opportunity to hit the new quarterback and get his being on uh, his third sack of the game. He's going to have some time here as the receivers stack trips there, bottom of your screen. Will be headed to the end zone. Northern Iowa secondary. All deep standing inside that 20 yard line. Rolling out is Mays. Sets his feet, chucks it up. It looks like it's got enough to get to the end zone, and it comes down incomplete. Northern Iowa makes the final stand of this first half. A little John in the end zone. A lot to be excited about if you are a UNI Panther or fan. They have won the first half of this game, capitalizing on multiple mistakes by the Penguins, a couple of injuries to quarterbacks, but all the momentum is in the purple and white. Elijah Campbell, part of the pass deflection late there for Northern Iowa as the Panthers with a 10-0 lead. And Dane and the defenses that we knew were going to be so strong have been strong as the defenses have only allowed three points. Northern Iowa's touchdown came on a pick six. Absolutely. We talked so highly about the Penguins and their defense. And to be honest, they've really done a fine job. Created a turnover on a crucial situation as the as the half was winding down, but then capitalizing on defense as well. So good football being played. Not the most exciting football, Brad, but yet solid football, especially on defense. All right, so Northern Iowa into the locker room on the road. The defenses flex their muscles early, but Northern Iowa gets on the scoreboard. 10-0. This is Valley Football on ESPN3. Joined with UNI Director of Athletics from University of Northern Iowa, David Harris. David, uh, six or seven months on the job now. Uh, talk about kind of your role that you've been uh, pursuing over these six or seven months, kind of establishing a, a mission for what you and your staff want to accomplish. Absolutely. We spend a lot of time just talking with people and also li listening, listening to what they have to say to us about our department, about the things that we do well, about the things that we struggle with. Uh, just to give us a chance to understand what the culture of the department has been. And then that would really help me make an informed decision about how we want to move forward. Uh, but ultimately, we want to be about academic excellence for our student athletes. Uh, competitively, we want to have a chance to compete for championships. Uh, then we also want to be engaged in our community. And so we're talking a lot about that. We've talked with our student athletes. We've talked with our coaches. We're trying to get out into the community to make sure that everybody understands we want to be a part of the community. We recognize our role in bringing attention to our university, which is a fantastic university. So I feel privileged to be in this position, and I've enjoyed the time so far. And you mentioned the student athlete part. Uh, you have a lot uh, of background in student athletes, student services. Uh, you really cry, try and connect with them. Absolutely. I try to spend as much time as I can with them. The job doesn't always naturally give you that time, so you have to try to make it. Uh, so I've done a number of things to try to get in front of them and just to listen, to give them a chance to talk about how their experience has been, and then to go to work with our senior leadership team to try to find ways to make that experience better. So we really want to take what their experience has been and try to elevate it. And so we'll spend time talking with our student athlete advisory committee. Uh, we'll talk with certain sports. Uh, we'll talk with certain smaller groups of student athletes just to try to get a full picture of what the experience is like and then try to find ways to add to it by bringing in additional people. It may be speakers. It may be services. Whatever it takes, we want to make sure that the, when they leave the university, uh, they ultimately feel like they were well cared for and they had a great experience. Now there's five sports uh, that will We'll have a great experience when it comes to a championship level. Uh, you and I actually hosting five conference championships this year. We're in a fantastic position because not a lot of places get a chance to be able to host one championship. We're getting a chance to be able to host five in one year. So we're incredibly excited that all of those things will be happening. Four will be on our campus. One will be off campus. Uh, but our facilities and event staff are already getting ready. They do a fantastic job, so I look forward to having those events on our campus, bringing people to the community and showing them a great time and, and showing the Missouri Valley Conference or uh, Max Sports at its finest. All right, David, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. You and I, Director of Athletics, more coming up here at the half. 
as we have 21st ranked Northern Iowa at 11th ranked Youngstown State. Joined now with Missouri Valley Football Conference Associate Commissioner Mike Kern. Mike, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, very exciting year once again for the Valley. We are on quite the roll. We had five teams in the playoffs last year, five teams in the playoffs the year before. Of course, North Dakota State's running the national championship, five straight for them. So we've got a lot of things going on. We've got a bunch of good teams again this year. Once again, wins over the FBS seems to be a constant for the MVFC. We set a record this year with four. Of course, Northern Iowa had one against Iowa State. The most heralded win this year was North Dakota State's win over Iowa, one of just four all-time against an FBS ranked team, Iowa 11th and 13th in the polls that week when North Dakota State won there a couple weeks ago. Uh, every week, inside and out, uh, no matter what location, it's always a, a tough place to play. Youngstown State, no different. Uh, every week, though, five great matchups. We, we really do. We are we are legitimately 10 teams deep this year. Missouri State was a little down last year, but they they won two road games. They won at Murray State to, to break a long losing streak on the road. Then they won at Indiana State, a ranked team. First time they've won at a ranked team in a long time and winning a conference game on the road. So they are legit. Now we've got 10 teams here. You're right. Five games every week, five tough ball games. It's going to be a tough road to, get, to win the title this year. A lot of different teams looking at those FCS playoffs as a possibility. Talk a little bit about your role at the national level with FCS football. Yeah, this is my, th my third third year serving as the FCS managing director and I really work with the other 12 conferences of 13 counting the Missouri Valley Football Conference. We put out a national notebook. We work with ESPN to try to push our messaging collectively on a national scene. Happy to do it. It's been a, it's a, been a wonderful three years for me. It's been very exciting to watch some of the top players uh, not only excel in the Missouri Valley Football Conference, but take their level or their play to the next level in the NFL. Well, I think our, our landmark player had been Kurt Warner, of course, with Northern Iowa coming out of nowhere, stocking shelves at the high V and suddenly winning Super Bowls. He's, he still has set the bar pretty high. David Johnson last year, Great rookie season and having another great year this year for the Panthers. Now we got Carson Wentz in North Dakota State, the highest ever player drafted for us, drafted number two overall, and he's proven why. Another uh, exciting outlook for the FCS as uh, uh, a lot of teams really uh, locked in on trying to get into the playoffs. How much excitement is there through all of the different campuses just halfway through the season? Well, for, for our league you know, that I can speak to, you know, everybody's excited. Everybody thinks they have a chance at the playoffs. Our team that's in last place entering this morning was Illinois State. They hadn't won a conference game entering today. They beat Northwestern. So you know how strength, the strength of our league is kind of epitomized by Illinois State's struggles in the league after beating a Big Ten team. So. Uh, Playoffs, I think we have a legitimate shot at five teams again. It's a little challenging as teams start beating one another, but I think a six and five record gets a team in from our league. And Mike, uh, you're also Associate Commissioner of the Missouri Valley Conference. Uh, basketball uh, tip-off media day is coming up shortly. Yes, my other, my other part-time, full-time job. <laughs> uh, basketball in the Missouri Valley Conference has been great. Wichita State and Northern Iowa have been our standard bearers the last couple of years, both reaching the NCAA tournament in each of the last two seasons. Northern Iowa and Wichita State will be good again. Illinois State will be right up there. Should be another great year in the basketball. All right, Mike, thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks. Mike Kern, Associate Commissioner of the Missouri Valley Football Conference. More coming up here at the half from Young's A defensive touchdown by Northern Iowa as the UNI Panthers in front 10 nothing over Youngstown State in Youngstown, Ohio. As we take a look at some scores from throughout the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Today's action bottom left of your screen. Dana, you probably called it. <laughs> South Dakota State defeats North Dakota State. So impressed with South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits have a phenomenal offense, some big time weapons on the outside and their tight end, Dallas Goddard, and Jake Winicky, and, and I'll tell you what, they can match up against anybody, and they, they ran into a buzzsaw against the Bison, and the Bison lost Easton Stick, the quarterback. His first regular season game loss, uh, or the loss of his career. So yep. tough matchup there, but I'm sure we'll still hear a lot more about the Bison as this season winds down. Close games throughout the entire Missouri Valley Conference. South Dakota, a three-point win over the Sycamores on the road. Western Illinois winning on the road. South Dakota State was in the Fargo Dome. And Southern Illinois, a two-point lead on the road at Northern Illinois or excuse me, at Normal, Illinois. I, I tell you what, and I've always been impressed by the parity in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. It just goes to show you that there is quality football that has been played and continues to be played 
uh, here in this conference. A lot of parity, good teams matching up against other good teams going to have those type of scores. And they're doing it on the road. Northern Iowa, 10-point lead on the road here as we take a look at uh, schedules coming up next week. Missouri State inside the Unidome in Cedar Falls. This Youngstown State team goes on the road to South Dakota State, fresh off their win over the Bison. Yes, indeed. Missouri State is really doing a nice job there. They have come a long way since last year. Uh, some ugly losses last year, but they're competing with the best of them this year. And you see the matchups up and down in Youngstown State. They got their hands full today, and they're going to have their hands full again next week against the Jacks. All right, back with more here at the half. Northern Iowa, a 10-0 lead over Youngstown State as they're on the road. On the road, it's Northern Iowa with a 10-0 lead over Youngstown State, a battle of top 25 teams in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. As we take a look after seeing those scores from the day, how things are stacking up, Youngstown State trying to join South Dakota State at the top of the conference now, SDSU at 3-0. Absolutely. What we've seen from these two teams, we knew coming in, you don't have to be the sharpest tool in the shed to understand that these two teams play phenomenal defense but you're seeing solid football being played up and down throughout the Missouri Valley Football Conference and Northern Iowa two and three looking good so far but Youngstown State is right up there at the top and a win for Northern Iowa five teams would then be two and one a five-way tie for second place we take a look at some action from the First half, the defenses, we talked a lot about them. <laughs> Let us show you why. Well, we knew what we were walking into, Brad. Solid defenses, run-stuffing defenses, defenses that capitalize coming from the defensive backfield, relentless pass rush, not allowing big plays to be had on either side with their offense. But I tell you what, so impressed, and then mistakes happen. You try to press, you try to push, you try to prod, and good defenses make you pay that's exactly where we're at right now 10 nothing and you can see the numbers there youngstown state not really being able to get anything going offensively rushing or passing and then the key number there three three turnovers, turnovers. our stats of uh, whose stats went right is sponsored by state farm here to help life go right so yeah those three turnovers too so important and getting Northern Iowa back on track, putting points on the board, winning the field position game. Aaron Bailey really got it going, too, uh, on that scoring drive where they got the field goal. Ball-controlled offense. He's doing a nice job, not trying to press too hard to make big plays. Not many questions with his ability, but on the flip side, who's going to come out and be the quarterback to lead this team in the second half? We see... The backup right there coming in, Nathan Mays warming up. You wonder about the health and, and the availability of the other quarterbacks, Ricky Davis and Trent Hosick. Uh, but right there, Nathan Mays looks like he's ready to go. Nathan Mays, just one completion coming in, or excuse me, his career high one completion. He has matched that. Yes. <laughs> Next completed pass, uh, a new career day for him so Nathan Mays that redshirt freshman that 1991 national championship team for Youngstown State their first of four in the 90s their silver anniversary 25 years ago this year very special for Youngstown State as it really got things going in the 1990s indeed this is a wealth of history with this program they've done a phenomenal job obviously a lot of their success came under that man Jim Tressel back in the early 90s you consider you may have been a freshman on that team and you were part of three national champions in 93 and also another one in 94 so great tradition here in Youngstown State is we see Bo Pelini trying to get things turned around encourage his players out there we see him tapping the helmet of that young quarterback trying to get things going and get some points on the board 
All right, so today's game sponsored by State Farm. There for you when things go wrong, but also here to help life go right. Talk to an agent today. Call 800-STATE-FARM. As Northern Iowa comes in on the road, a 10-0 lead at halftime here. Uh, Dana, any adjustments that you see being made on either defensive sides of the football? I think what you have to get it, it, into a situation, if you're Youngstown State, is try to get opportunistic. Yes, UNI is being pretty vanilla with their offense. They're not trying to push the ball downfield. They're not taking advantage of one-on-one -on -one situations on the outside. They are opting to run the ball, take up a lot of the clock, and see if Youngstown State will continue to make those type of mistakes like they did earlier. All right, let's check in with Tim Poe's guy down on the sideline. Tim? Hey, guys, had a chance to catch up with both Coach Farley and Coach Pellini coming out of the locker room. Both coaches stressing defensively they just need to tackle better. They both feel that they're doing a subpar job in the tackling department. As far as offense, for Northern Iowa, Alvin ba or Aaron Bailey, they feel that he's had his lanes to run. Coach Farley said he needs to do a better job holding onto the ball, can't put it on the ground, and has to do a better job making a read on those lanes when he wants to take off. As far as Youngstown State, Coach Pellini said, Offense is going to be a little bit more limited in the second half. Trent Hosick is out. Ricky Davis is questionable coming back in for the second half. All right. Thank you very much. Our visit with head coaches today brought to you by the Holiday Inn City Center in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Thrifty car rental. You'll find a great rate on a great car rental at more than 300 conveniently located thrifty car rental sites. As we get set to kick off the second half, it'll be Youngstown State. With the football first, Alvin Bailey and Darian Townsend back deep for YSU. And Austin Ertham set to kick it off for the Panthers. Well, Brad, earlier we talked about the opportunity that the Penguins had to establish their type of game by kicking off. Now it's about establishing your offense. The defense has done a solid job. Let's see what the offense can do after making some necessary adjustments at halftime. I'll start with it at the 25 yard line. And as we heard from Tim down on the sideline, Hosick is out. Davis is questionable. It will be Nathan Mays. Bringing the offense out here for this first offensive possession. Talked about two playmakers on that offense. We saw Alvin Bailey, Darian Thompson, Townsend jog off the field two intricate parts of this offense guys with two touchdowns each in the receiving game Jody Webb in the backfield as is Shane Kuhn big blocking tight end and it off to Webb and a nice dance out to the 34 yard line for Jody Webb the senior from Toledo Ohio we got a chance to talk to Bo Pelini before the game, and he spoke so highly of Jody Webb and said there's been times they sorely missed him earlier this season due to an injury, but there are times where there are plays to be had or, or yards to be gained in chunks. As we see a fumble snap. Nathan Mays again. Richard freshman quarterback. Some of the small detail things, yes. very, very big when you get in a situation like this. And you kind of still get the vibe, even though they haven't played their best football, you still get the vibe that they're one big play away from this, these fans getting back into the game, some more excitement getting into the stadium, and the momentum being shifted back to the Penguins. And off to Ruiz, left side, Northern Iowa, all over it. Bryce Douglas, one of the first men there. Ricky Neal coming off the bottom of the pile once again. Seeing a lot of wins at the point of attack. The front seven for the UNI Panthers are winning more times than not. And seeing elevation of play by guys like Bryce Douglas, just a sophomore. Preston Woods is out there. Hezekiah Applegate. We've called Deshaun Dexter many times. And Ricky Neal. Gosh, all over the field. Logan Cunningham is back to return the Mark Schuler punt. A high, deep punt. Schuler, one of the best punters in the Missouri Valley Conference. And Cunningham calls for 
a fair catch. The MVFC Special Teams Player of the Week, an average over 45 yards per punt. It's a big one right there. So Northern Iowa's offense now out for the first time here in this second half. And Dana, it felt like Northern Iowa had a lot of momentum. A field goal, a pick six, the offense was driving. Then they coughed it up late about midfield. They do, uh, and I think there's a lot of confidence indeed because their offense is doing exactly what they want. The Penguins' defense is not forcing the Panthers outside of their game, not forcing them to throw the ball downfield. They're running the ball very efficiently. Tyvis Smith in the backfield with Bailey. Bailey's going to keep it and try the right side. And Derek Rivers, for the first time, gets to you and I's senior quarterback as Rivers, one of the top defensive guys, leads the team, tackles for a loss. Seven sacks as he ranked number two in the FCS behind Carter Scholl. Well, we haven't called his name very often in this game, but this is what we were accustomed to seeing. Big plays, not allowing ball carries to get around the edge. Good discipline there, creating second and ten. It's YSU's career leader in sacks with 33. Bailey getting back to the line of scrimmage now on second down looking for a pass over the middle and that was tipped in the middle might have been Savon Smith that got a hand on it and then goes to the turf maybe cramping up yeah. that looks like it is a cramp you can see that left leg just staying stiff right there but we talk about athleticism despite the quarterback respecting the athleticism of Aaron Bailey in case he opts to try to tuck the ball and run, you have to have a spy in the middle of that defense. And the big defensive tackle, Savon Smith, was right there. And they're going to try to tend to that cramp in his left hamstring. All right. While they're at an injury, we'll take a break and be back as this is Missouri Valley Football Game of the Week. And I was just like, oh, I have to have it. Is it suede? Suede loves suede. State Farm knows that for every one of those moments, there's one of these. Well, I love it. This piece is so you. I know, right? I saw it and I was like, I have to have it. Is it suede? It's suede. I love suede. That's why we're there with renter's insurance when things go wrong, but also here with a rewards credit card to help life go right. State Farm. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. Davon Smith getting help to the sideline as Youngstown State's defense working hard. One of the biggest tests they've had this season is against this Northern Iowa Panther team. It's a game that they circled at the start of the season as their biggest home game of the year in Northern Iowa. Opening up with the first half, 10 point lead. Bailey though in big time trouble goes down. Avery Moss gets to Bailey once again. Outstanding pressure, not allowing Bailey to escape in that pocket. We've seen his exploits throughout this game and throughout his career, but 
How about that defense bearing down? And Avery Moss, the leader, gets it done. Jalen Powell in there on the tackle for Youngstown State as well. But Moss, that transfer from Nebraska, followed Bo Pelini to Youngstown State. And one heck of a senior year. Here's Cooter back to punt for Northern Iowa. And Townsend drifts underneath it. Now backpedals quickly from the 36-yard line. Big opening up the middle. Northern Iowa tackles him inside the 35, but a big return by Darian Townsend to give the Penguins a short field. Out kicking your coverage right there. Too much space, a lot of real estate for Townsend. We've seen that he's made big plays for this Penguins team. Gets a little bit off balance there, but still has the speed to capitalize on a huge hole in the punt return game. Touchdown saving tackle right there. And now the offense seems to have an opportunity. Tyler Putney, an old lineman down there making that tackle. A great field position for the Penguins. So once again, it's Nathan Mays at quarterback for Youngstown State. Jody Webb behind him gets the carry off to the right side and maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Duncan Furch with a tackle for Northern Iowa. Haven't seen many times in this game, Brad, where only one purple helmet was making a tackle. Right there, we, we saw Furch, you saw Farley, you also saw Ricky Neal. Three of their playmaking linebackers making plays and being a part of those tackles. It's good group pursuit tackling. Yes. Playing defense as a unit. As Mays wants to throw plenty of time. Throws over the middle looking for the end zone and knocked away at the last minute. Jamison Whiting, the senior defensive back, comes in at the last split second to break that up. This could have been another big turnover for Whiting. You see he has that right hand severely wrapped. Probably can't get a, a good grip on the ball and it just gets deflected there. A big play, but his responsibility was actually another receiver. He read the eyes of Mays and had an outstanding break on the ball. Whiting a corner, safety, very versatile guy. Right there at the bottom of your screen, playing in that cornerback position. Ran for student body president this last spring. As here's Webb. A sweep out to the right. Shot by Mays to get rid of it before he got throttled in the backfield by Neal. But Webb using his speed, trying to get to that edge. Well, former linebacker himself, Mark Farley, you can tell he has a huge impact on this defense. The linebacking play has been outstanding. Ricky Neal, a backup middle linebacker, coming off the edge. They've made a concerted effort to pound the quarterback when they run that option for the Penguins. And right there, Mays took a big hit. So a field goal try now for Youngstown State. Zach Kennedy has only missed a 50-yarder so far this season. He's got the distance, but it is wide left. His first miss from inside 50 on the season. And Youngstown State still not on the scoreboard. More after this. In the third quarter from Youngstown, Ohio, Youngstown State looking for some answers as Northern Iowa continues to lead 10-0. And YSU, a 44-yard missed field goal, gives the Panthers an offensive operation set up at the 27-yard line. Aaron Bailey hands it off to Tyvis Smith, right side. Stutters at the 28, out to the 33-yard line. And Tyvis Smith, he's had a good game. 60 yards plus for the Northern Iowa senior out of Davenport, Iowa. Tough yards in between the tackles. Talk about tough yards, he's trying to tough out. It look, looks like a leg injury as he makes his way to the sideline, but you're also seeing the Panthers at the top of the screen, three wide receivers widening out the defense, trying to run the ball up in the middle. Hand off to Malloy straight ahead, and not much there with Avery Moss. 
leading the way and also in there on the tackle, Jalen Powell. Avery Moss's first couple of steps off the line of scrimmage is outstanding. And we talked about both of those guys, the bookends of this defense, Derek Rivers and Avery Moss. But he is just beating the offensive tackles at will at times when he's using that speed rush. Very quick. Empty backfield for you and I. Third down and manageable. Bailey looking to throw. And it's incomplete, looking for Allen out in the flats. Bailey had more time than he thought he did. He, he saw the blitz coming, knew that he had Moss and Rivers coming off the edge, tried to get rid of it a little bit too quickly there. But another nice stop, defensive stop by the Penguins. Aaron Bailey just 3 of 10 passing on the day for 44 yards. Rima, Fountain, and Malloy each with a reception. Not much through the air for you and I here today. Another booming punt from Cooter. And this one bounces at the 11 and will be downed inside the 15. That time he outpunted the coverage and the return man. Could have been dangerous if Townsend would have been able to get back there, but that was an absolute explosion off of his foot. Ball turned over. How quickly the field position could change in this game when you have solid punting like that. So Youngstown stayed out offensively, 91 total yards. Dana includes the 27 run by Ruiz, the 28 yard run by Hosick. 46 yards on the other 32 offensive plays. Not very efficient for this offense right now, but just down two scores. Just takes one big score to get things turned around for this home team. Mays looking to throw, rolls out. Now he's going to tuck it and run, and he's going to get out of bounds before Farley can get to him. Heat-seeking missiles of the linebacking <laughs> core for the Panthers. They are trying to ins instill some pain to the ball carries, especially the quarterbacks for the Penguins. Fortunately there, Mays got out of bounds and out of his way. Now you know Mays was told not to take any big <laughs> hits, as they've already had Ricky Davis, who's questionable here this second half, Trent Hosick. Uh, we were told he's officially out for the rest of today's football game. So it's likely Mays the rest of the way. Martin Ruiz straight ahead for Youngstown State. Carter Schultz comes up from the bottom of the pile. Carter Schultz, again, number two in the FCS. Or excuse me, number one in the FCS in sacks on the season know that I was career leader in tackles for a loss and quarterback hurries and climbing the list on quarterback sacks the William V Camby trophy semifinalist come to Heisman for academic excellence along with some solid football play and third and short Youngstown State gets just enough. They move the chains and keep this drive alive. So they spot them at the 25-yard line. You see UNI has the backup quarterback, Eli Dunn, warming up on the sideline while Aaron Bailey takes a seat. Not sure what that's about. Dunn hasn't had a whole lot of experience, but he's got his helmet on. Looks like he may be coming into this game. Hand off to Ruiz straight ahead. Well, Youngstown State tries to get a little momentum built up here on the offensive end. We're seeing a lot of purple helmets right now. The defense of the Panthers really packing in eight or nine guys into the box. And we talk about the box, Brad. You're talking about from tackle to tackle or tight end position to tight end position. A lot of white jerseys in there as they recognize in the emphasis of the run game by the Penguins. It's Mays under center Ruiz the tailback he'll get the carry straight ahead little cutback able to get him four yards. Third down and two coming up here for Youngstown State. 
Looking for another third down conversion. Try and keep the offense on the field and give their defense a little rest. Exactly. Take up some time and you're seeing what they're trying to do. They're recognizing, hey, there's no rush right now. It's over five minutes left in this third quarter. Let's just establish a drive, give our defense a little bit of a break as they try to get this third and short. Extend this job. In motion is Wood. Ruiz gets the carry. Fighting for the 35-yard line and a little second effort there. He may have got it. Looked like Northern Iowa stopped him initially. Kept churning those legs, continued to move on, playing through the whistle. Not just settling. Excellent job. Great push up front. Vitas Arankowitz, we talked about him, the sophomore center, right in the middle. Good push on the outside. Justin Spencer from that left tackle position. And that's Tevin McCaster, the running yes. back. And the third man in has seen quite a bit of action in the second half of this, uh, these season games. See how many guys are in the box there for the Panthers. Two wide receivers, one at the bottom of the screen, one at the top of the screen. Safety's moving down into the box. Forces a timeout to be called by the Penguins. And the play clock winding down. Bo Pelini will talk it over. We'll be back with more of the State Farm Missouri Valley Football Game of the Week. Well, the defense is flexing their muscles once again in Youngstown, Ohio. It's Northern Iowa and Youngstown State. In this second half, Northern Iowa minus seven yards of offense. Youngstown State, 35 yards of offense. And in the backfield, Ruiz on a carry. Right side, tackled by Farley. As the defense is once again coming out here in this third quarter, playing very, very solid, not giving anything to the offenses. We're seeing mirror images between both defenses, and you have to appreciate Bo Pelini's plan here is to try to win at the line of scrimmage and establish a long drive and get some points on the board. Mays looking to throw. Pass complete to Townsend. And once again, multiple helmets around the football for that Northern Iowa defense. Just running a basic hook route with their playmaking wide receiver there, Darian Townsend. But unfortunately, those are the biggest plays that this team has been able to get, I should say, consistently. Yeah, they had the two big runs, but this offense has really limped along throughout this game. Slow to get up, being helped off the field. Justin Spencer, the left tackle out of Indiana, Pennsylvania. There's a look at Aaron Bailey. Keep an eye on uh, Bailey as uh, Eli Dunn had his helmet on, all strapped up, throwing the football around on the sideline. In that last timeout during this Youngstown State drive, then Bailey got up, started throwing the football around as well. So, Not sure what's going to happen on this offense for the Panthers. I'm sure in large part it's going to be based on the success or lack thereof of the Penguins during this drive. There's May on the run, flips it out to Webb on the right side. And close to the first down marker once again on that far side, looking to get to the 46-yard line. It was a third and four, and they are short. They mark it right at the 45-yard line. Bo Pelini is right in the ear of the official on the far side, not agreeing with that spot. And on fourth and short, it looks like they're going to go for it and at least line up to go for it here. Tevin McCaster at tailback. We saw the second effort to convert a third down moments ago. Here's a fourth down and one. It's McCaster straight ahead and it's a new set of downs for Youngstown State. Outstanding job at the point of attack. Gavin Wiggins, the left guard, number 60. Big pancake block, pushing forward. Driving those feet. You see the movement by Vetus, the center as well. And 
Don't see very many smiles. Probably not going to see many in this game from Bo Pelini, but he has to be proud about that. First fourth down conversion of the football game. Youngstown State now knocking on the door of Northern Iowa Territory. Fakes the handoff to McCaster. Now he's going to tuck it and run. Slips by a couple defenders and plops himself all the way down to the 41-yard line. Key point of that last play, Brad. He actually got the first down by being thrown over the defender, the tackler. He actually landed on the tackler, scooted up on his butt. Got an extra couple <laughs> got of an yards. Extra couple of yards, got the first down. Nice job there. Getting a little help from his friends. <laughs> Mays sends Patterson in motion and then hands it off to McCaster. Straight ahead, Bryce Douglas and Preston Woods in on the tackle for Northern Iowa. Still getting a good push up front. Bryce Douglas, you see there, a transfer from Illinois. His roommates with Aaron Bailey and was actually roommates with Aaron Bailey when they were both at Illinois. Good friends that... Uh, both chose a new school and went to Cedar Falls to play for Northern Iowa and head coach Mark Farley. There's McCaster. It's a big hit from Jared Farley, the youngest son of Mark Farley. It's third down and long. There's a look at. Tough, hard-nosed kid right there. Watch this young man come up in this program. Started off with special teams and worked his way into the lineup and has been one of the leaders for a couple of years now. Really done a fine job. Yeah, it was one of three true freshmen to see the field back in 2014. Got to play with his older brother, Jake Farley. Another very good linebacker as well. That's some good one. The one that's the head coach on the sideline was pretty darn good too back in the 80s. The nice pass to that far side. It's Webb on the reception and Nathan Mays with a big completion right there. Talk about simplifying the offense. This is just called a hook curl concept. On the outside, Webb is just trying to widen out that outside defensive back to open up a window to throw the hook route. And uh, good mobility there by Mays finds Webb. Little second base throw. They get a first down again. We've got a man down as Bryce Douglas slow to get up and way on the other side of the field. You would think maybe he was trying to run off the field and just couldn't uh, make it all the way from where he's laying right now on the football field with 16 seconds left here in this third quarter. Looks like he uh, see some smiles there by the training staff. Maybe a little bit wind knocked out a little tired. This is a, a long drive. Those big boys in the middle need some water, need some oxygen. Douglas 6'1", 291 pounds. Pretty warm night here. The wind has died down just a little bit. There you see Bryce Pop, UNI's defensive lineman. Quite the story with Douglas. You mentioned him at 291. He played at 335 a year ago. Cut a lot of weight, really got himself in a lot better shape to be able to play a lot more snaps coming into this sophomore season for Northern Iowa. It ended up being a pretty good one here through five and a half games. Sophomore out of Plainfield, Illinois. As freshman quarterback Mays hands it off to Ruiz. Ruiz out some space, makes a man miss. Inside the 20-yard line. And maybe just shy of a first down. But a big run on first and ten. Improvising. This is not how this play is drawn up. But Ruiz, with his athleticism, sees a little crease and gets a big play. So that is the end of the third quarter. No score in the third. It's Northern Iowa 10, Youngstown State nothing. You're watching the State Farm Missouri Valley Football Game of the Week. Fourth quarter right after this. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. 
Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. I coined my definition of success in 1934. My definition of success is peace of mind attained only through self-satisfaction in knowing you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable. It's like reputation and character. Reputation is what others perceive you to be. Character is what you are. Nobody comes into this house without paying the price. Not here! Not ever! State Farm knows that for every one of those moments, there's one of these. Nobody comes into this house without paying the price. Not here, not ever. Well, did you get it? More people save money by combining their home and auto with State Farm. Here to help life go right. State Farm. Youngstown State controlling the football here in the third. On the move right here in the red zone. Against this UNI defense, Martin Ruiz straight ahead down to the 15. And it's now a first and 10 for Youngstown State. Time of possession closing in on 12 minutes here in this third quarter compared to just three for Northern Iowa. Phenomenal display of execution and just want to so we see another panther go down and i think it's more about fatigue right now these guys have been on the field defensively you're seeing cramps obviously this situation they're trying to stretch out a cramp but part of that can be fatigue as we see bryce pop there and concern for the players on the field but at some point you have to impose your will defensively and get the necessary stop and they've gotten no stops during this game Brad they just uh, seem to be wearing down just a little bit well they've been out there uh, a lot uh, as we mentioned that third quarter the UNI offense just six plays and we'll see if that trend continues here as Preston Woods is the one slow to get up for Northern Iowa at neck surgery a year ago as uh, pre herniated discs but let's get a check in on uh, Northern Iowa's offense we sent it down to Tim Poe's guy Tim Hey guys, a lot of questions right now with Bailey out possibly with Dunn warming up on the sideline. From what I'm being told, no injury issues with Bailey. If there is a change, it's strictly coach's decision. All right, thank you very much, Tim. So yeah, we did see Eli Dunn taking some serious throws, had his helmet on, fully strapped up as he continues to throw it around on the sideline. Aaron Bailey also with his helmet. He's on the sideline. We'll see if he comes out on Northern Iowa's next offensive possession. And if Youngstown State can come up with some points, it would be just a one possession game at that point. That would be a pretty interesting decision by Mark Farley is to switch quarterbacks. Not saying that Aaron Bailey is having a lights out game because he's not, but outside of the fumble, he hasn't really done anything wrong. He's made some plays, something out of nothing. He's used his athleticism. Not sure what they're going to look for in Eli Dunn, maybe to open up the passing game a little bit more. Well, we talked about his three of ten passing, but remember, a few times you called out receivers dropping the ball when it hit him right in the hands. As the run goes down to the 11-yard line for Martin Ruiz. This continues to be the big workhorse for Youngstown State here in this second half. That's exactly what you want to have is that kind of bulldozing mentality. See. A lot of guys with their hands on their hips, breathing heavy for that defensive line. They're just getting pushed back right now, and 
not able to really do much about it. Tevin McCaster to the left of Mays. It's Bailey in motion. It's McCaster straight ahead down to the six, seven yard line. That'll bring up third down and very short. And Tevin McCaster, the sophomore tailback. Big strong yards in between the tackles here this second half. Outstanding run there for McCaster, but a more even more impressive blocking display by Dylan Colucci, the right tackle. Absolutely put the defender on skates, moving him backwards and pancaked him at the end of that run. Great push. Mr. Dependable to that Youngstown State offensive line. McCaster appears to have the first down. It'll be first and goal. A tough one, two yard game as he tried to bounce it to the outside. But Youngstown State with quite the scoring opportunity here now inside the five yard line. The Penguins seem to have gotten their second wind. Had some success moving the ball and get an opportunity to put points on the board, but rarely putting their foot on the gas pedal right now. Mays hands it off. McCaster able to spin his way down to the two and a half yard line. Excellent job of footwork in the hole by McCaster. Jared Farley had a free run and a tackle opportunity on McCaster in the backfield for a loss and kind of sidestepped him there and still got some positive yardage. Very impressed with that young young running back, just a sophomore. The goal line situation, McCaster straight up the left side down to the one yard line as it will bring up third and goal. This is where the defensive minded head coach infuses his attitude on the offense by basically just telling his offensive guys hit him in the mouth push him forward. We're going to live and we're going to go for it on third down fourth down. We are, they know what's coming. You impose your will and that's exactly what's happening with the Penguins right now. Well then I will allow just two TDs. On the ground this season, there's the third right there. Tevin McCaster goes over the top, and Youngstown State is on the board. Outstanding drive for the Penguins. You're seeing some complaints by the UNI Panthers. Watch number 98. You talk about a guy just being worn down, really not involved in the play. We talked about Bryce Douglas being a factor in the middle. Gets a half-hearted effort there after a cut block. Just goes to show you how much this Penguins offense has taken out of this defense right now. It just seems deflated. On well, that Northern Iowa defense, been on the field a long time. As the extra point from Kennedy is good. Youngstown State within three. As a big drive. Gets them in the end zone. You're watching the State Farm Missouri Valley football game of the week. Youngstown State with a 22 play, 86 yard scoring drive to make it a three point ball game here. 11th ranked Youngstown State at home. Trying to not go anywhere. 21st ranked Northern Iowa trying to escape. With a big road win here in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. 22 plays, Dane, and that UNI defense showed that they were wearing down towards the end of that drive. They're going to need a little breather here, hoping for a Northern Iowa offensive drive that can consume some time. It's absolutely necessary. Obviously, we've seen Eli Dunn warming up and seems to be some question as to which quarterback will start this drive, but whichever one gets the call and it looks like it'll be done it looks like it'll be done they have to establish a long drive you cannot afford to put your defense back out there on the field Eli Dunn a six foot five inch sophomore out of Grinnell Iowa played in four games a year ago with six completions and again this will be just the seventh offensive play for Northern Iowa here in this second half.
So Eli Dunn, the sophomore, in at quarterback for Northern Iowa. Tyvis Smith to his right. And Dunn back to throw on first down and incomplete looking for Cunningham. That get tipped at the line? Uh, no, it's just a ball that got a little bit away from Dunn. A high throw. Just trying to run an out route to flood the zone on the wide side of the field. And it gets a little tricky here, Brad, because now you got Dunn in there. You're obviously trying to establish the passing game. Maybe putting some pressure on the defense. Got to be careful. Can't afford to have another three and out. And not much time off the clock. A little bubble screen pass, and it's gobbled up by Youngstown State. Armand Delavade came in and read that play from the get-go. Trevor Allen dropped right when he caught the football. Great read by Delavade, and this could have been a major collision. I think he let off just a little bit. A smart play there by the linebacker, and now you're seeing a lot more energy. And a lot of the fans who were quiet for most of this game got a reason to stand. Stambaugh Stadium coming to life here in the fourth quarter. Dunn is back to pass. Pressure comes. He's able to avoid it. Looking downfield, gets it to Fountain at the 30-yard line. That'll be short of a first down. And a punt situation, three and out, not what Northern Iowa needed. Out of this offensive unit. Now on the flip side with just six plays in that third quarter, the offense a little out of rhythm, having yeah. been on the sideline most of that third quarter. Out of rhythm, but also how much confidence Mark Farley has shown in bringing in the young sophomore quarterback and giving him three downs, three consecutive downs of pass plays in a three-point game when the defense has been on the field for that extended amount of time. So did not work out for the Panthers, but uh, a lot of credit for the confidence. Cooter with a punt this time into the wind. And Townsend makes the fair catch. Let's take a look at that Youngstown State scoring drive. 22 plays. They cover 86 yards. Came up with some crucial first down conversions. As the freshman quarterback Nathan Mays got things going with his feet, started to get it going on his arm as well. Yes, he did. You can see the confidence continuing to brew. And anytime you're a young quarterback and you can get the run game going, you recognize your offensive line is pushing forward like they are and opening up creases in that defense makes it a fun drive. And now all the momentum has shifted towards the Penguins. It's going to be interesting to see how this defense can bounce back just a short break that last drive. Tevin McCaster capped it off with a one yard drive and here's Mays keeping it on the ground. Some positive yards a the design, freshman QB. I'm sorry, Brad, a designed quarterback draw there by Mays and gets a lot of positive yards. Now second and four winning up in the middle. That's where a lot of the wealth has come in this game is Right up the middle for the Penguins. It's Alvin Bailey in motion. Hand off straight ahead for Webb out across the 35 yard line. Youngstown State first down. Earlier in this game, we saw a lot of the tackles from the defensive backs of the Panthers being made at the line of scrimmage or even some in the backfield of the Penguins. Not seeing those same type of plays anymore. AJ Allen on the tackle. Third on the team in tackles. Did not play a week ago in the game against South Dakota. As Mays hands it off again. Webb left side. Again, a big hole for Jody Webb. <laughs> Preseason all Missouri Valley Football Conference was a second team all Valley a year ago with over 850 rushing yards. And by committee, Youngstown State really getting their running game going. Jody Webb again, left side, gets the edge and gets into Panther territory before Jamison Whiting is able to wrestle him to the ground. Talk about hog tying somebody. 
tough, hard nose running by Jody Webb, 5'9", 175 pounds. Gets bent backwards, but uh, you got to love the aggressiveness here. Just isn't that how you rope a cattle? Or that? I'm a city kid. I don't know. Oh, it looked like there's a flag thrown. Maybe at the end of that play, a little bit of uh, too much trash talk and extra action after the whistle. So it backs Youngstown State up all the way to the 35. And they're showing second down and 11 now. So Youngstown State. The first time here this second half, Dana and I can remember they shot themselves in the foot as they pitch it left side to Webb. Gets a lot of it back out to the 42-yard line. And now some pushing and shoving, filtering into the Youngstown State bench. It's getting a little extra chippy now, and referees are trying to pull guys out of the scrum. It looked like there's a little bit of a shove on an official on the sideline. Seem to have gotten it quieted down pretty quickly. The officials right on top of it doing a nice job. I think there was a, a drive block by the what looked to be one of the offensive linemen for the Penguins and Panther defender did not like it. A little conversation being had with the officials right now. And we'll line it up, third down and four. Let's keep playing football. Yeah, nothing to see here. Let's move it on and get back to football. Nathan Mays with Ruiz to his right. Freshman quarterback looking to throw. Penalty flag out on the snap. Mays looking downfield and off the hands of the intended receiver as Stefan Derrick could not haul it in. Nice job by Mays on the hard count. Gets multiple Panthers to move into the neutral zone. Offsides goes for the big home run and does, doesn't get it, but they do get the first down. First and ten. It was third down and four. Five yards gets you the first. And a fresh set of chains for Youngstown State and a tired Northern Iowa defense out on the football field. Making some mistakes, mental mistakes. Ruiz at tailback. It's been a heavy dose of the running game here in this second half from Youngstown State. And it's because of runs just like that. Five yards straight ahead. Winning on first down, creating second and medium situations. Yes, they had the one penalty that brought the ball back and got them in the hole, but they were able to quickly dig out of that hole. And they have a timeout being called here. All right, well, we'll take a break with them. We'll be back more of the fourth quarter action when we return. This is St. Farm, Missouri Valley. Townsend helped to the sideline, Youngstown State's offense. Still out on the football field here in this second half. Ruiz straight ahead. And a gain of two. Now, Dane and Youngstown State on 31 rushes, 116 yards for Youngstown State's offense. Northern Iowa offense as a whole, nine plays, minus one yard. Amazing turn of events. You saw all the momentum in the first half on the side of the guys in white and purple. But man, the effect of halftime adjustments, Bo Pelini really doing a nice job with his team. The defense is tired. Farley able to hit him in the backfield, but Ruiz able to jet forward and make a positive play out of it. Close to a first down. It will mark him a yard shy, fourth down and short. And Youngstown State has had a ton of momentum and a lot of success with the running game now. Dana, here's an opportunity for Northern Iowa's defense to get themselves off the field. Well, if you are one of those front seven guys, 
for the Panthers. Got to take a deep breath. The best effort you could possibly get or give right now. The biggest play of the game for the Panthers. All right, Northern Iowa wants to talk it over. We'll be back fourth and one when we return. A critical fourth down and one here. As we're in the final seven minutes of the fourth quarter, Northern Iowa's defense trying to get themselves off the field. Youngstown State trying to keep the momentum rolling. Martin Ruiz straight ahead. A big stop by Northern Iowa. Here's a late push. It'll depend on the spot. As the officials come in, they need to get to the 43-yard line. Both teams think they came up with the play they needed here. Well, Brad, you hit the nail on the head. It was an extra push at the end. Some help from fellow teammates as Ruiz continued to churn those legs to get that extra yardage. And it does look from our angle like they got that first down. Watch from this angle. You can see good push. Initially gets stopped short, but watch the extra push. By the offensive linemen, two offensive linemen come to the rescue. Staffed right there at the 44. <laughs> Looks like Gavin Wiggins, Justin Spencer, the two old linemen, help move along Martin Ruiz, and they get the first down. But not a bad job defensively there. A good, solid stop. Just couldn't finish the play. So Youngstown State keeps the offense on the field. And can keep the momentum rolling here. Under 6.30 to play now in this football game. Nathan Mays, freshman quarterback, looking to throw. Looking downfield, going for a big home run ball, and it's intercepted. Jamison Whiting comes up with the pick. He's out to the 30. And he's run out of bounds at the 41-yard line. A huge interception. And the freshman quarterback makes his first big mistake. Yes, he does. Waits a little bit too long to throw that ball downfield. And you wondered prior to that play, Brad, if this was going to be another 20-plus play drive. And if they had enough time to do it, they opt to try to go for a home run. He tries to look off the safety. It's not allowed. Not Doesn't get enough mustard on that pass. And Whiting is there with... The wrapped hand and all, a big play for the Panthers. And Aaron Bailey back in at quarterback for Northern Iowa. So a three-point lead for the Panthers. Jamison Whiting gets the football back. Uh, Northern Iowa's third interception of the game. Bailey straight ahead. And it's a gain of just one. Ball controlled offense. They're trying to go for that. As you can see, communication there with the young quarterback. Calm, cool, collective. They know exactly what he was trying to do, and he's pleading his case right there. And from a coach's perspective, Brad, you just tell him that's just a throw you can't make. You can't make it sliding to your right, off balance, with the heat coming bearing down on you. More than I was top three running backs. In the backfield, a handoff to Malloy. Left side now cuts it upfield, a gain of two. As a Youngstown State defense playing tough here this second half. Been very consistent throughout this game. Defense, they've had some falters at times, but they've come through. Now here's the big question. If you make this stop on third down, the clock's going to continue to run. They punt. Now you do not have enough time to get a 20 plus play drive you're gonna have to take some chances downfield and this defense has really stepped up for the Panthers it's gonna be tough see if Northern Iowa looks to throw it Bailey bobbles it and gets clobbered Derek Rivers a huge third down sack and Youngstown State continues to hold that momentum Bailey had no chance right there Ball was a snap low down to his throwing hand side. Still had the presence of mind to secure that ball. Could have been worse than it really was. But how about the speed rush off the left side by 
Derek Rivers. This lead by Appleman. Man. So another three and out by this Northern Iowa offense. And the clock under four minutes. With Cooter back to kick it away for Northern Iowa. Townsend back in the game is back deep for Youngstown That's State. Room. From the 16 yard line into space at the 40. Across midfield, Townsend tackled inside the 40 yard line. A penalty flag came in. It may have been a face mask. And Youngstown State is in great field position thanks to their special teams. And it might go back just a little bit. The flag at the end of the play may have been unsportsmanlike penalty. A, a foul against the punter blocks downfield. And uh, you're seeing the excitement on the sideline of the Penguins. After the but play they was over, personal foul. foul, unnecessary personal roughness. Foul. Unnecessary Number roughness. 35 of the return team. 15 yard penalty, first down. I, I have a, I'll have a tough time with this call. I have a very tough, I understand what they're trying to do and what they're trying to employ, but the protection that goes to punters and kickers has gotten way out of bounds. These guys are going to make a play right here. This is a big offensive lineman. He's out in the middle of nowhere. He can make a play. You don't get to see the foul from that angle. It was before he got into the picture, you're saying. Yeah, before he got into the picture. And he did not have the face mask, just had the jersey there. Okay. There was a block downfield that the officials are calling unnecessary. And I just, if he if he breaks through that tackle, that guy could make the touchdown saving tackle. As a blocker, you don't know that. You're right. just listening for the whistle. I just don't like that call. There's McCaster on the left side across midfield. And there's a penalty flag that comes out at the end of this one. Emotions running away with themselves here in Youngstown, Ohio. It's like a heavyweight bout. Haymaker after Haymaker. A little bit of a late blow here or there after the whistle. And the referees are right on top Personal of Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. Defense, number 29. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. The illegal hands to the face against Jamison Whiting. Just came up with that big interception for Northern Iowa. Now a miscue here. Oh, right there, you can see grabbing the face mask underneath the receiver's face mask. Isaiah Scott, I believe, yeah. that wide receiver on the outside there. Good blocking downfield, frustrating the defensive backs. Mays hands it off to McCaster. Straight ahead and inside the 30-yard line for YSU. Here's the situation. We talked about moving the ball downfield. We're coming upon three minutes left in this game. The kicker has already missed the field goal. Could be a big question. Straight ahead with McCaster, bounces off a tackle, and Campbell comes in to clean up the mess. No gain on the play. It's Tevin McCaster as Youngstown State's only points of the game. A one-yard touchdown run that capped off an 86-yard drive. 22 plays. This UNI defense trying to come up with a stop. This may be their best opportunity here, a third down and six. Mays pitches it. Webb on the sprint out. Did he get down the sideline and stay in bounds? He did. Tight roped his way inside the 20, and another late flag comes out. And this might be again against Youngstown State as well. Like Justin Spencer, the left tackle, number 61. Might have kept blocking Both all the way right through. right on the, the middle of the field. Not supposed to be out there on the field that far. It was out by the numbers, getting in the face of his players. The play was over. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 61 offense, 15 yard penalty. It's still first and 10. One of the leaders of this offensive line. Justin Spencer, drive blocking downfield. 
Blocking Duncan Furch and just kept going oh, and kept threw going. him right through the signs right there. Yeah. Can't do that. Right there is enough. He continues on, tries to push him over the barrier right there and ends it with a pancake block, but another setback for this Penguins team. You like the effort, you appreciate the the anger, but you have to be able to bottle it up. First and ten for Youngstown State. And tackle made right away. Webb again trying to go left side. Jared Farley in there on the tackle for you and I. At some point, they're going to have to give Mays the option to keep that ball. They're, all the attention is being drawn to the running back. Mays pitches it. Webb on the right side inside the 25 yard line and a flag comes out very late once again just inside the 25 I don't know if it'll be enough for a first down I don't know I'm, I'm hoping this flag is not because of the hit on the quarterback because that was legit he held the ball exactly as late first as possible foul, unnecessary roughness defense number seven half the distance to the goal first down and that is exactly what they're calling unnecessary roughness. I don't. Wow. I'm not sure about this, Brad. Watch the last second. He just hit him right in the stomach. I mean, I, I, he did. There's no helmet to helmet. He still has the ball. He lets him go. Late flag. I, That's a tough one right there. Very tough call. So it sets up a first down and ten from the 12 yard line. Mays hands it off. Ruiz straight ahead, and he's bottled up. Duncan Furch and Carter Schultz, the first men there for you and I. Inside. Coming up upon a minute left in this game. Decisions have to be made. Youngstown State still has two timeouts left. Obviously have to keep one for a game-tying field goal attempt. There's Ruiz breaking tackles inside the five-yard line. Duncan Furch, the touchdown saving tackle. And that makes it third down. And so a timeout taken by Youngstown State with 48 seconds up on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Bo Pelini. Trying to win one for the 1991 National Championship team back celebrating their 25th anniversary here today. Well, this is Ohio football, state of Ohio football, blue collar, ground and pound. The old Buckeyes that Bo played for, three yards in a cloud of dust. I played against Bo in college. Same fiery guy he was, or he is now, he was back then as a safety for the Buckeye program. In the late 80s and uh, some of the weight may be on the shoulders of that young man right there Zach Kennedy the field goal kicker just missed a sophomore one, missed one from 44 earlier today Northern Iowa meanwhile a three-point lead led 10 nothing at halftime their defense has been on the field a ton in this second half they're trying to come up with one last stop right here yeah it's all about will right now who has the will to get the job done. Your legs can be heavy, you can be gassed, out of breath, but this is what this game is about. Imposing your will, playing through pain. Ruiz in the backfield. Mays takes the low snap. Ruiz stood up, pushed into the end zone. It's a touchdown for Youngstown State. You can see dejection on the side of the Panthers. Watch how this block unfolds. Great job of push up front. Watch number 60, Gavin Wiggins, right here. The tackle's made. The big old lineman comes in, 6'4", 310 pounds, just a sophomore. Gets that extra push. Brock Eisenhuth also pushing into the end zone. Multiple jerseys, white jerseys, getting backpelled and pushed into the end zone. 
How about that effort? Dylan Colucci right there, the right tackle. Phenomenal job by the Penguins. Ruiz straight ahead. 46 offensive plays run here in this second half. 42 of them have been on the ground. It's been a heavy dose of the run game, and they complete that drive. With a three-yard score from Martin Ruiz. If you ever have a situation where a team epitomizes their coach, this Penguin team is. Bo Pelini, this is what he is. This is what he's about. This is what he expects. And the execution was outstanding. Ruiz keeping his legs churning. Looked like that right knee got close to getting down. I was just going to say that. Not sure if it actually touched, and that's what they're reviewing. It has not been a quick confirmation on this touchdown, so we'll maybe get to see all the different angles that we have here from Stambaugh Stadium. That was third and short. And Dana and I believe they would have been able to get a first down, I think. Yeah. You're right, third and one. I think from the three. Let's see, let's see if that knee drops down. Big hit right there. Initially spins off it. Oh, that's down right Ooh. there. That it is pretty like clear video yeah. evidence there. Effort was outstanding. But you're right, Brad. It does look like that may be called back. And if you are Bo Pelini, you need to have all your guys ready to get back on the field. Because once that ball spotted, the clock continues. And you don't want it to use That's that right. last time out unless you absolutely have to for a field goal attempt. So they've got a lot to sort out. they got to see where that ball is going to be spotted, if it's a first down or if it makes it fourth down. And so that's probably the reason for this for this delay. It's Youngstown State trying to complete the comeback against this Northern Iowa football team. I'm surprised in these last couple of drives when the Penguins have opted to run the option. Why the Panthers didn't force Mays to keep the ball. They were commit to the running yeah, back they were, first. Com, they were doing their job, but these are where adjustments can be made where you recognize you got a third string a quarterback, no other healthy He's quarterback. He's short of the line to gain on correction. He's short of the goal line. However, he was beyond the line to gain. The result of the play is a first down and goal for Youngstown State. The clock right. will start on the ready for play. Short of the goal line, but they do get a first down out of the game so they set it up at the one yard line first down the defense gets a little bit of a break you wonder if they still got any gas left in their tank brad crucial down here 44 seconds the clock will start as soon as the ball's put in play youngstown state just has the one timeout left Youngstown State trying to get set because after that first down, the clock will start when the official says go, and there it is. Mays still looking over to the sideline for the play. Less than 35 seconds on the clock now. Mays to Ruiz straight ahead, and he's in. off from three yards out from from one yard that's plenty for Martin Ruiz straight ahead good push up front so impressed by this offensive line especially in the second half untouched for the go-ahead score Jody Webb Martin Ruiz Tevin McCaster three-headed monster for Youngstown State able to replace the void Left by Ricky Davis, the quarterback, as a penalty flag comes out. Another mental error. Jamison Whiting, number 29, tries to leap over the center to block the extra point. 
The try is good for extra point. Personal foul, leaping, number 29 defense. That 15-yard penalty be enforced on the kickoff. Well, and with 28 seconds left, Dane, and every yard is oh so precious, excuse me, and a 15-yard penalty that they'll put on the kickoff. It's going to make it really tough for this Northern Iowa offense. So you see Ruiz taking it in. A little shimmy. Yes. A little shimmy Could for have that been 91 called. team. You see the officials right there in his ear. Could have been called for a penalty there. And then as Whiting made his way back to the sideline, he got an earful for Mark Farley about leaping over the D-line as that, like you said, Brad, every yard counts. 28 seconds left, two timeouts. They haven't been very efficient in the passing game, and now they have to push themselves forward, can't settle for a field goal. They have to score a touchdown. Well, and we've seen Eli Dunn, the backup quarterback, come in to try and spark the passing game a little bit. We'll see who we see on this final drive. Aaron Bailey, the starter, or Eli Dunn, the sophomore. So they kick it off from midfield. I have to believe that it'll be Eli Dunn. He's got the stronger arm, the better passing capabilities, and he needs some big yards and chunks through the passing game right now. So on the kickoff, they will boot it through the uprights and make Northern Iowa set up from the 25-yard line. So 28 seconds remain. Northern Iowa will need a touchdown to win a field goal will do them no good trailing by four and they'll need to go 75 yards and you see Eli Dunn the sophomore quarterback in the center of the UNI offensive huddle a lot of weight on his shoulders there and he's gonna have to step into this tough situation and create a spark in this offense I'm not sure if it's possible the defense for the Youngstown State Penguins as we said earlier one of the best in the country. Trevor Allen, Darius Fountain, and Jalen James at the top of your screen. Michael Malloy in the backfield. Dunn rolling to his right. Being chased. Throws on the run. Tipped up and it falls incomplete. Looking for Jalen James. And two Penguins had an opportunity to pick that one off. Did you see Avery Moss coming off the back end on that boot. The speed, watch him on the left side right here. Bearing down, offensive lineman couldn't catch up to him. Dunn got that ball out just in the nick of time. Nate Dorch, I think, made the initial tip in the secondary for Youngstown State. Second down with 22 seconds to play. Maybe a hook and ladder here. Dunn looking deep for Cunningham. It's caught at the 45. First down for Northern Iowa. Clock stops momentarily while they reset the chains. 16 seconds to play. Great throw and catch there by Dunn. Big play to be made by Cunningham. Five foot nine senior receiver with a big play. Smart timeout to be called. With one timeout left, you may be able to get three plays at the most if needed, and we've and at, seen it at done. This, at this part of the field, too, at the 44-yard line, you're probably still looking at a couple of longer plays. Well, you so they may take out. a little more time yeah. off the clock. Well, you can throw a deep out here, take seven seconds out, get inside the 30-yard line, maybe to the 25, and now you have possibly two shots. If you can get a, a quick out here, get out of bounds so you don't have to use that timeout. So you and I runs Tyva Smith onto the field, coming out of the timeout. First down, the clock will stop or will start on the snap. Dunn straight back, pressure comes, and Dunn goes down. Northern Iowa has to burn their final timeout. 
Straight up the middle, Savon Smith able to split the offensive line from the left side of the deep tackle position. Not what you wanted to happen if you are for the UNI Panthers, but it's not the end of the world. The ball is still right near midfield. You have to believe that Eli Dunn has the arm strength to at least get one throw to the end zone. And with 10 seconds left, you might have two plays if the ball is incomplete. So a quick throw takes six or seven seconds to maybe throw a Hail Mary. Do you look at the option of trying to pick up 10 or 15 yards either no. on the sideline? I don't I don't think you benefit anymore. If he, if he can throw the ball 55 yards, then it's the same as if he can throw it 45 yards. Take two plays from right here. Yeah. Take two plays from here, get back, maybe that half roll, try to chip on Rivers and or Avery Moss and see who makes the big play. What playmakers will make the play? Youngstown State looking to win their fourth game in a row. Northern Iowa looking to jump up into that top half of the MVFC standings. Could move to two and one, part of a five-way tie for three second receivers. place. I'm sorry, you have three receivers at the top of the screen, but you have a tall receiver at the bottom. Dunn avoids the pressure, throws it deep into the end zone. It falls incomplete. One second on the clock, zero seconds on the clock. Northern Iowa asking for one second to be put back up on the clock. And Mark Farley is out in the middle of the field talking with the official about looking back at that play to see if the clock stopped. Youngstown State has cleared their sideline. They are on the football field. Coach Farley wants one second left. The officials have not left the field totally, and they. And now they are running off. That is the end of the football game. Youngstown State wins it 14 to 10 over Northern Iowa. The Panthers wanted one last heave from 45 yards away. So we'll take another look at it. Good effort there. Actually, the ball gets through. Actually went through the hands of Malloy there. He had an opportunity to secure that catch, a very tough catch indeed, but still some questions at the end of this game if there was one second left on the clock. Well, they are always tied in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. They don't get any tighter than that one. For Dane and Hughes and all of our crew, I'm Brad Wells. So long from Youngstown, Ohio. The final score, the Penguins 14 and the Panthers 10. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.